Hi kids, how's everybody doing today? My name is Del Cullen and I'm doing fantastic because I've got some really cool and exciting things to show you today. Raise your hand if you like animals. Come on, raise your hand. That's great because it's my job to help and care for wildlife. Wildlife are wild animals that are not kept by people for pets. Wildlife can live in forests, deserts, swamps, mountains, and even colder Arctic terrain. Each wild animal has a specific purpose, and each purpose makes our planet Earth a better place. That's why I always say, Wildlife Matters! A few years ago, I wrote a book about a squirrel that I helped. We became good friends, and he inspired me to write a book about his adventures in the wild. It was called The Wild Adventures of Scurry the Squirrel. Scurry would introduce the readers to a variety of his wildlife friends, and even some animals that were not as friendly. Scurry and I did our best to teach kids, just like you, about the importance of our wildlife. Well, today, with my wife Dee, say hi Dee. Hi kids. We're going to read the first book to you of Scurry the Squirrel and add just a little bit of animation to the original illustrations from the book so wonderfully drawn by our friend Michelle Mott. Well, that's not all. We're also going to get a visit from our special friend, Athena, the Screech Owl. Can you say hi to the kids, Athena? Why, hello, everyone. Athena, I hear that you're going to tell us all a wildlife secret later in the show. Is that true? Yes, it is true, but you'll first have to finish reading the book. All right then, let's get started. The book is titled, The Wild Adventures of Scurry the Squirrel. My name is Scurry, and this is my story. The Wild Adventures of Scurry the Squirrel. Book One, Scurry's First Adventure. This is a story about a gray squirrel. Squirrels are important to the earth, for they plant the seeds for future trees and forests. Gray squirrels are tree squirrels. Their relatives include ground squirrels, flying squirrels, chipmunks, marmots, and even prairie dogs. Some squirrels live in nests of leaves and small sticks high up in the tall trees, while others are born in a hollowed section of a tree. This keeps the baby squirrels safe from dangers on the ground until they are old enough to run and climb. This tale is about a special little gray squirrel whose first adventure began soon after his birth. One midsummer afternoon, while his parents were out eating, storing, and planting acorns, this baby boy squirrel crawled too close to the nest's doorway, and he fell out. He was still very young with his eyes still closed, and a thin layer of hair covering his tiny body. Luckily, he fell into a tall, soft patch of grass, so he didn't get hurt. He was lost without his parents and became very scared. He also started to get cold, so with both eyes closed, he began to search for a warmer spot to hide. Just a short distance away, the squirrel found a nice spot. It was hard but very warm. It was also noisy. Since the young squirrel's eyes were not open, he didn't know that he was on the side of a very busy roadway. The road, warmed by the sun, seemed like a good spot, but unknown to the squirrel, it was very dangerous. The little guy's good luck would continue when a young girl named Betsy came walking down the sidewalk and noticed the young squirrel. 
Betsy knew it was important not to interfere with wildlife, but when she noticed the squirrel's eyes were still closed, she helped the youngster get to a safer grassy area. As Betsy walked away, the frightened squirrel ran back to the warm spot on the road. Betsy became very concerned and stayed with the little squirrel, not knowing what to do. Just then, an approaching vehicle pulled over to help. The driver's name was Diane, and she knew just what to do. Her brother and his wife were wildlife rehabilitators, and they lived close by. They helped injured and lost wildlife get better and back into the wild where they need to be. Betsy and Diane carefully put the baby squirrel in a shoebox with holes in the lid and drove to the rehabilitation facility. When they arrived at the rehab location, they were greeted by Dell and Dee. After gathering all the information, Dee took the youngster to get warmed up and comfortable. Dell went back to the location where the squirrel was found and began searching for a nearby nest or signs of his parents. He found nothing and returned home. Autumn was quickly approaching and soon it would be winter. Not a great time for a young, inexperienced gray squirrel to be in the wild on its own. Squirrels will spend the fall season storing acorns and other food for the winter because once snow covers the ground, it's not always easy to find food. Dee felt it was best to rehab the young squirrel at home through the winter and have him ready for an early spring release. The very next day, while Dee was bottle feeding the new guest, one of his eyes popped open. That evening, after being fed, Dee put the tired baby squirrel in some cozy bedding but he quickly ran back to her. She tried a couple more times, and each time the little guy would scurry back, not wanting to leave her. Dee thought this was funny and cute, so she decided to name the young squirrel Scurry. The next day, Scurry's other eye popped open. He began growing fast. Before too long, he was a young adult, spending much of the winter outside in his rehab home. It was lonely being by himself growing up, but he got to watch his friends outside of the large rehab cage and knew he would soon join them. Until then, Scurry spent a lot of time playing with the stuffed animal. One day, a huge snowstorm covered everything with a few feet of snow. All the other animals were forced to stay in their homes because of the snow and the very cold winds. Dee was the only one who Scurry would see each day when she brought him food, and this made him happy. It was tough at times, but Scurry made it through the rough winter and was ready to take on the new world outside his rehab home. Once springtime was in full bloom, Scurry was released in the rehab facility's backyard. His house was moved to a high tree nearby, close to food and water below. Scurry was now in his natural habitat. No one knew how he would react being free outdoors and having no boundaries, but it was up to Scurry now to learn on his own, and he was ready. A wild animal must always be allowed to be wild and not be forced to be a pet. Wildlife choose how much to trust people so we must respect their space and never approach or disturb a wild animal. Due to the compassion of four people, Scurry was given a second chance. He was now free to leave or to stay. He was free to be wild, and his adventures were just beginning. Scurry decided to remain in the treetop house that he grew up in and remained friendly with the folks that raised him. In return, Del and Dee would often throw Scurry nice hard hazelnut treats. Squirrels have two large upper and two large lower teeth that are always growing. Each day, a squirrel must use hard nut shells or hardwood sticks 
to keep their teeth filed down to a normal size. A squirrel will work on their teeth up to an hour each day. Next door to the rehab facility was the last wooded lot in the neighborhood. Lots of tall trees made great shelter for many wildlife species. It was important for Scurry to have other wildlife, including squirrels, to learn from and grow with. Scurry enjoyed bringing his new friends to Dell and Dee's back porch for an introduction and hopefully a treat. There was Biggie, named because of his large size, Scratch, who always seemed to be itching, and Split, who had a notch split in one ear tip. Scurry also had a best friend, Miss Piggy, who got her name because she always tried to eat more nuts than anyone else. Some of Scurry's other wildlife friends were Riff and Raff, the Cottontail Rabbits, Mr. Peepers, the Cardinal, and Willie the Whistle Pig. A whistle pig is a funnier name for a woodchuck or a groundhog, which are marmots and the largest of the squirrel family. Scurry's smallest friend was also a relative, Mr. Chip Chipperson, a chipmunk from the woods next door who visited every morning. Everyone liked watching Chip to see how many peanuts he could fit into his cheeks at one time. At last count, his record was an amazing five. There were also opossums, raccoons, and a fox that passed through the yard from time to time. But they weren't really friends with Scurry, rather just animal acquaintances who shared the wild. A small, beautiful family of white-tailed deer also visited the yard often. While the adult deer snacked on the lush green grass, the fawns would play with the younger squirrels, hopping and chasing each other around the yard. Scurry had a wonderful wild world he would soon begin exploring. Hey, D, why don't you read the second part to the kids? Okay, Del. The second part's called, No One Likes a Bully. Scurry, who had been raised in winter, learned quickly in the wild how to store food and prepare for the colder months. Fall was once again coming to an end. Scurry and his girlfriend, Miss Piggy, were busy storing lots of acorns for the winter. One day, while the pair were burying nuts in their yard, a stranger came leaping through the trees and down to the ground. It was a much older and bigger gray squirrel who wasn't as friendly as the others that would often visit. His name was Grumpy, and he was a real bully. He enjoyed chasing the other squirrels and taking their acorns. Because Grumpy was so big, the other squirrels usually hid when he came around. Scurry looked around at all the sad faces of his friends and decided to take a stand. Scurry approached Grumpy, grabbed a nearby acorn, and started eating it. This made Grumpy very mad, and he swatted the nut from Scurry's hands and began chasing him. Scurry streaked up and through the tall trees leaping from one branch to another with an angry grumpy close behind. 
They left the yard and kept running until they vanished in the far, far distance. Scurry had not returned. Several days had gone by with no sightings of either him or Grumpy. Even Miss Piggy ran off during the chase and was not seen since. Everyone was very worried. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months. Over two months passed and the squirrels never returned. The winter had been rough once again with lots of snow. Everyone couldn't help but fear the worst. It wasn't like Scurry to just disappear from the only home he had ever known. He knew it was a safe place for him and his friends, and it was strange that he would abandon his yard over an acorn dispute with a bully. Another big snowstorm rolled through, making it even more difficult for wildlife to find food. Though all the other animals were sad about their missing friends, they still had to get through the remaining winter themselves. Treat time at the back porch was still a special time for gathering, but it just wasn't the same happy place. Time passed and the critter crew met on the back porch for treats, as the snow was melting away under a sun that got warmer each day. All of a sudden, something strange happened. Grumpy slowly limped up to the back porch, looking very worn out, begging for a handout treat. His front paw looked swollen. He was missing a patch of hair on the back of his neck, and his tail was crooked. Squirrels' tails are very important to the species. It's used for a sunshade, an umbrella, a blanket, a windbreaker, and a shield. Even more important, it is used to help a squirrel keep its balance and as a rudder when swimming. That's right, squirrels are excellent swimmers as well as agile high climbers and acrobats. Grumpy looked as if a cat had perhaps roughed him up and he had narrowly escaped. Maybe he had learned a lesson about being such a bully because he took his hazelnut tree and slowly walked into the wooded lot next door. Grumpy left and was never seen again. His appearance, however, gave hope to the others, because if Grumpy was still around, it was possible that Scurry and Miss Piggy were also. The snow was just about gone completely, and spring was only a week away. All wildlife prepared for the welcome change of the season. It was the first day of spring and young flowers began to cover the ground. Leaves began to cover the trees and sunshine filled the sky. By now, all the backyard critters had accepted the absence of both Scurry and Miss Piggy and began to play amongst themselves. It had been a week since Grumpy returned and had then left for good and things were getting back to normal. On this beautiful day, the gang lined up at the back porch door for their lunchtime treat. Dell tossed a handful of peanuts onto the back deck and watched all the squirrels calmly share them. A lone squirrel heard the nuts hitting the back porch. He jumped from a small back corner tree onto the ground and slowly hobbled across the yard toward the deck and the other animals. When this visitor reached the deck and hopped up on it, Everyone stopped and stared in amazement. No one could believe what they were seeing. It was Scurry. He had returned and he was okay. Scurry then hopped up on the table in the center of the porch as if to announce to everyone that he was back, although he did have minor injuries. Everyone was so happy to see him. Like Grumpy, he had a swollen paw that he held up and did not walk on. There was a small lump on the top of his head, which seemed to be healing fine. Worst of all, Scurry's eye was closed from what looked like a scratch. This was a concern, but everyone was just happy he was home. A squirrel's eyesight is very important for survival in the wild. They need strong and clear vision to leap from treetop to treetop without falling. They also rely on their good vision to spot their natural enemies. 
It seemed as if Scurry had finally shown Grumpy who was boss, but no one knew why he'd been gone for so long. It turns out that Grumpy had chased Scurry so far away, it took time for him to find his way back home. During that time, a snowstorm had hit town and trapped Scurry in a new shelter a block away. As soon as he could reach a tree, he went back to his old home. The next storm had rolled in and no one noticed that Scurry had made it back to his old home in the tree. He was very tired and he fell asleep. However, Scurry was keeping a very special secret. The secret was so important that when he saw Grumpy again, he wasn't going to be pushed around and chased away. Scurry stood up to Grumpy, which nobody had ever done before. This made the bully a little worried and after a short scuffle, he decided to leave Scurry alone, and he moved on. What was Scurry's secret? It had to be something pretty big. Everyone was so happy that Scurry had returned. It was a huge relief, and all their questions were soon answered when Miss Piggy also returned and surprised everyone. She hopped up on the table right next to Scurry, and it was immediately clear that Piggy had babies and was taking a break from nursing their young. That's right, everyone. Scurry was a daddy and Miss Piggy a mommy. That's where they had been for so long, bundled up in the treehouse, hiding right under everyone's noses. Piggy had four babies and Scurry stayed by their side the entire time, keeping them all warm and safe through the winter. Scurry had grown up and become a wonderful father. After a few welcome home hazelnuts and a round of peanuts for everyone, Scurry and Piggy ran off back to their house in the tall tree in the backyard. Everyone watched as they climbed up the tree and perched themselves on the roof of their house. All at once, four young miniature squirrels with little bushy tails came out from the two holes of the house and joined their parents on its flat rooftop. They were much bigger than Scurry was when he'd been rescued, but they were still young and small and needed their mom and dad. The young squirrels had brothers and sisters to play and grow with, something Scurry had lost when he fell from his nest as a baby. Both he and Piggy had done a wonderful job during a difficult winter, and it was a great time to celebrate. Scurry's eye healed fine while the little ones grew up and became part of the backyard gang. Soon they would go in search of their own new homes to raise their own families. Their journey may take them far away or maybe just to the wooded lot next door. But for now, they're happy where they are and that's just fine with Scurry and Piggy. A beautiful and happy ending, but that wouldn't be the last of Scurry's adventures in the wild. It was just the beginning. Boy, that was a lot of fun. Scurry sure is a cute one. Dell, show everyone the drawings of Scurry done by the school kids after reading the book. Oh yes, here you go. These are just great. All you kids should try drawing your own Scurry the Squirrel. And you're welcome to email them to me because I'd sure like to see them. Don't forget me. We'd never forget you, Athena. That's right, Dee. For those of you who haven't met Athena in person, she is a beautiful and a very smart Eastern Screech Owl who I care for because she had an accident in the wild and can no longer see. She is blind. But I still love visiting schools and meeting friendly kids just like you. It's my favorite thing to do. I also enjoy helping Dell and Dee teach everyone about the beauty of all wildlife. So go ahead, Athena. What do you want to say to the kids today? Well, did you know that not all owls hoot? I don't hoot. I'm a screech owl. I have a much different sound. Let me sing it for you. The saw-wet owl 
doesn't hoot as well. He has another unique sound. Listen to this. So not all owls hoot. Well, thanks, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed that little book read. I can't wait to come back and read you book two. I hope you'll all join me. How about it? Will you join me? That's just great. And kids, do me one more favor. Can you all together say out loud my favorite two words? Wildlife matters. Ready? We'll do it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Wildlife matters. Thanks, kids. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Goodbye. Hi, everybody. Athena and I look forward to visiting real soon. Until then, remember, wildlife matters. <laughs> <laughs>